lessons or for come follow me for their kids like how weird is it that you're trying to make content that believing parents might let their children watch accidentally so you can like woo them oh like it's it's this is just beyond creepy dude good evening everyone and welcome to mormon sunday school with radio free mormon it's totally where, where is his concern, like John DeLynn talks about all the time, for informed consent, right? Oh that is extremely God. dishonest. Like, that Dude, is and these are the guys that have trouble with Scott Christopher? To me, that is literally the epitome of they lie in wait to deceive. It's a fulfillment yep. of scripture. It's just really creepy and gross, and I don't want them around my children. Am I the only person that views this as like pretty evil? I think you need to show your jersey. I think I think jersey covering is wrong. His new channel, teaching Sunday school, literally. Oh yeah, that's the channel I was talking about. Oh, that was the channel he saw. Oh, dude, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but it seems so pernicious, bro. Like he's literally, like it's it's literal wolf in sheep's clothing stuff. What's the number one rule of anti Mormons? It's the very first rule in my list of thirty. They never refute scripture. They, they only, only fulfill it. They only fulfill it, right? And now you literally have the top probably one of the top five North American anti-Mormons, just literally fulfilling the definition of wolf in sheep's clothing. Have you seen this, Kwaku? Have you seen it yet? I've, I saw one, ep one like part of one episode. <clears throat> Dude, I've only seen like 30 seconds of it because somebody saw a link, but here, maybe we can react to this. All right, I'm going into, I think he called it Mormon Sunday School, right? Isn't that right? Yeah, Mormon yeah Radio Sunday Free School. Mormon Sunday School. Okay, so here's Mormon Sunday With School. With this... AI picture of uh, RFM dude, on a superhero looking. Dude, dude, look at this right here. So here's Mormon Sunday School. Welcome to Mormon Sunday School. And then, like, let's just go to what? The first video, right? And where's the very first video? We go down. Introduction to the Book of Mormon. Oh, my gosh. Look at this right here. It's the bottom video where my icon is hovering. It's titled Introduction to the Book of Mormon, January 1st through 7th, 2024, Mormon Sunday School. Okay. This is an obvious, uh, it's an obvious um, copy of the Come Follow Me manual and the way that they divide up the Come Follow Me manual by the dates and the lessons. Like this is trying to create purposeful spiritual confusion amongst members of the church who are searching for materials, I don't know, for their lessons or for come follow me for their kids. Like how weird is it that you're trying to make content that believing parents might let their children watch accidentally so you can like woo them? Oh, like it's, it's, this is just beyond creepy, dude, you know? And so like, watch, let's watch it. You want to watch this really fast? Just react to it. Kwaku want to get up on that mic, bro. Yeah. Can you turn yeah. off the AC though? It's freezing. Oh, sure. I'll turn off the AC and it's freezing. I'm recording now. So, <laughs> you know, let's just react to this and get it done. Um, here it is right here. The introduction. Look, it says, come follow me on the thumbnail. Holy crap. I didn't notice that until I saw this right now, but it literally says just come follow me on the thumbnail, the introduction to the book of Mormon. Yeah. That's so dishonest. Oh, that is extremely dishonest. Like, that dude, is and these are the guys that have trouble with Scott Christopher using his stage name. Like, dude, what the, the heck? This is how, some, how is Bill Real not mad about this? This is some evil and per pernicious stuff. Like, this is really kind of up there with why so many of like the public school issues have become an issue because like parents are worried about activist teachers and activist high school counselors like just stealing their kids minds away from them you know what i'm saying by all these weird laws that are passed where it's like oh we don't have to release medical records to anybody but the kids but i can talk to them at school while you're gone and away at work you know it's like just this really creepy weird thing where it's like why are you trying to steal my kids out from underneath me you know so anyway Look, let's let's see what he says 
this is just pernicious, man. So uh, here's just our reaction to uh, RFM's Sunday School, very first video they published. There looks like they're 12 or 13 videos in. Introduction of the Book of Mormon, Come Follow Me, RFM Sunday School, go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mormon Sunday School with Radio Free Mormon. What I'm going to be doing in this. OK, I'm sorry, but this is already wildly dishonest. Like this is wildly dishonest, because if you're the one of the number one anti Mormons and you're not self representing is anti Mormon material, this is no different than the neo Nazis that used to buy all of the URLs for Martin Luther King and Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and some of the early civil rights leaders and some of the early big Jewish rabbis. And they would make websites that would purport to be biographies on them. And then all it would do would list all the crimes they committed and all the prostitutes they got with. And then all of the debunked stereotypes and so on and so forth for the number one anti-mormon to really just self-identify as sunday school and not as anti-mormon i just find wildly um disingenuous at best straight up creepy and dishonest at it's, worst brad it, it's like what john delin was doing with understanding mormonism right yeah where he's putting up this thing as though it's like hey here's the real story of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and we're going to tell you from an unbiased perspective what it really is. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> like, this is yeah. It's not about biased. informed consent. It's not about uh, this. This is uh, this is really frustrating. Um, OK, let's see what he's got to say. Four year long podcast is following along with the come follow me manual in the curriculum of study for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We'll be starting with the very first lesson in 2024, the subject and course of study for 2024 is the Book of Mormon. And so he literally says, welcome to Sunday school. We'll be following the manual and the course of study is this. He has still yet to represent himself as the number one anti-Mormon, not number one anti-Mormon. Uh, he, he's three like number anti three though, right? Yeah. Top three anti-Mormon, at least. Kwaku, YouTube, what's but. your... Do you have a ranking list still, or is it out of date right now? He's, there's no way he's top three, top five. Uh, well, well no, top the number one. I don't know with TikTok being like so. I mean, you got the you who's who's the. the it would be on the YouTube platform, maybe. I know, but just in terms of like influential media and like who's the girl uh, who does the show in her house? Girls Camp. Girls Camp, like Girls Camp is freaking popular. Either way, top you know, ten. Uh, we can say John top Lynn's 10. still number one. Yeah, I'd put Kara as number two. Sure. Um. And then where does go on the list? Number three. Oh God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> waiting for you to say that. <laughs> hey, we're now clip it and yeah, say. Yeah, we're not look. live streaming. We're not live streaming, bro. We're not live oh, streaming. Can, he's gonna he's gonna clip that out. <laughs> he's gonna okay. forget to edit this out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, oh. so so here we are. He's easily he's easily top ten. Okay, and he's self representing at this point as just. He's the Unshaken podcast. He's a seminary teacher. He's a come follow me -er. And here's the slide that I've created. It says Mo Mormon Sunday School with Radio Free Mormon, yours truly, where you learn stuff you're never going to hear in regular Sunday school. And as I said, this is the come follow me manual on the Book of Mormon for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, Let's yes. I know it's ad hominem to say this. I understand. Okay. He's looking old. Oh. Is, is, no, I mean, isn't he? He's looking old. Now, Quaku, <laughs> I, I, don't I was think... thinking the same thing. No, not, and not, I, like, it... not like, oh, he's decrepit, but like you can hear in the voice. You can see uh -huh. the dark mood lighting I don't think has helped him is what you're trying to say. No, no. He looks from the debate to now. He, he's looking older. Is it the beard? Maybe. Uh, it's maybe the it's eyes. the beard it's the because he didn't have the beard during the, the debate. Like you can see even the posture. Or maybe it's just the cruel hypocrisy. Like, I'm... <laughs> Could be just me. How but. old is RFM? I don't know. I thought he was in his like maybe sixties. Um, I don't know, but at this point, I think he's in his episode three, Emperor Palpatines. But um, <laughs> get that Palpatines. Ah, uh, oh. I gotcha, oh. I gotcha. That is a, that is going to be a 
I got, groaner I mean, foul. I kind of got the tip, Yeah, that's going to be a very <laughs> bad groaner foul. There's a reason why you get paid for your comedy and not me. So anyway. Um, Yet. We can fix that. Yes. So let's just keep going. Another just two minutes. Like, Oh, Brad. Also, how come your, I just realized, how come your background is the same like divider every Chinese restaurant has next to like a- <laughs> And every know, massage parlor. Like every <laughs> massage parlor trailer <laughs> has that with bamboo. Did you just because steal it from- Because they're cheap. <laughs> that's why either that or else he's like uh hiding human rights violations behind there somewhere you know yeah, what we'll if in like out. 20 years some documentary comes out like the utah strangler bradley taylor whitbeck oh that's pretty cool that's pretty awesome man okay you well know, let's just let's just do another 60 there. seconds of this like uh, I, I, I th- this just really does seem very wolf in sheep's clothing keep going that's in number one covering from January 1st through 7th of 2024. My idea is to get these lessons, these podcasts, these shows out a week in advance of when that subject is being studied in Sunday school in the LDS church to give you a chance to brush up on your gospel knowledge before you go to church. Notice how everything he's saying is like insinuating for his audience Oh, yeah. Knowledge. Things you won't hear in Sunday school, right? Like these things that to his audience make it clear what he's doing. But to anyone who doesn't know, it's going to go over their heads. This is obvious. In politics, we call it voter confusion. Okay. But I don't know what the YouTube definition is. But this is obvious deception. Okay. This is, there's no other word for this. This is wolf in sheep's clothing deception. He's literally pitched this as a nice lesson to gain gospel knowledge. And he's literally about to give a big fat lesson with just a bunch of anti-Mormon tropes and debunked uh, lies. I'm sure because that's the way it always goes. Another 30 seconds. And then um, I guess we'll just do two random clicks inward and see what he's got to say. And then perhaps it will supplement what you'll be hearing in your regular Sunday school. Now, let me go over here. The very first, by over here, I mean into my slideshow. Here we go. Let me just check check and make sure that's going. Yes, it is a tale of two testimonies. The first lesson is about the introductory material for the Book of Mormon. And it talks about the gift of the Holy Ghost or the witness of the Holy Ghost in praying about the Book of Mormon and learning that it is true, I decided to frame my discussion with you today around this idea of a tale of two testimonies. So he so far has literally never self-represented as what he is. And I, I think everybody knows the difference between overt and covert combatants. Like even in, in war, it's, you know, there's protections for overt soldiers that fight in the battlefield of ideas. If you capture a uniformed soldier, that soldier, at least according to the Geneva convention, I'm not saying every army and every person actually follows these laws, but there are protections against war crimes, against uniformed officers that the covert ones, the spies are not afforded. And why? Because being a spy who doesn't show up in uniform and self represent, you know what I'm saying? As an enemy combatant, is there there's there's a more there's something more pernicious uh pernicious sorry to that that operation right so you literally have a guy who we are two minutes in now who has never identified as exactly what he is an anti-mormon am i the only person that views this as like pretty evil i i think i think i think you need to show your jersey i think i think jersey covering is wrong and he needs to say, my name is RFM. I uh, make media critical of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I'm going to go through the Come Follow Me Sunday School manual. Why wouldn't you do yeah. that? It's where, totally- where is his concern, like John DeLynn talks about all the time, for informed consent, right? Where'd that go? Does yeah. that suddenly not matter? Yeah, and where's the informed consent about <laughs> getting into, like, 
th- there's never informed consent about what's going to happen if somebody's testimony is torn down. And don't forget, RFM is the guy who said that I am not my brother's keeper. I should be able to tear down uh, people's testimonies, their faith. I have zero responsibility once they've lost that framework and that organization in their lives. Like, even if you're cynical, you can't look at the stats of people that have lost their faith and think, whoa, maybe this isn't a good thing for society and we should be responsible in our ethics in doing this. This is the guy that said, I am not responsible for the fallout, the self-termination, the depression, the obesity, the horrible, horrible stats that follow so many of these people. And I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sure there's plenty of people that say best thing I ever did. And great. I wish them peace. I wish nobody, but I, I wish everybody on earth as much peace in this life as they can get. And if exiting whatever faith organization you're a part of was part of that process, then fine. So be it. And so on and so forth. But the macro statistics of people leaving their faith, especially faiths that have codified rites of passage have, uh, um, you know, a, a very vibrant and robust sense of community that foster family involvement with the entire church group and so on and so forth. All of the stats show that those people, not only do they have better, more healthy lives, they have better, more healthy families. They have children who are more well adjusted. And for you to take that away from those people, you are statistically sending them into one of the darkest places they can go. And then to not self represent as a critic and instead just end up making fake Sunday school lessons that are meant to bite. I see no other excuse for not identifying as what you are. To me, that is literally the epitome of they lie in wait to deceive. It's a fulfillment of scripture that they Mm -hmm. are wolves in sheep's clothing. And I see no intellectually honest rebuttal to that claim. Do you, Brad? Am am I off my rocker here? No, no. And and to me, I think about contrasting this with what bill real was just doing when he was wigging out about scott christopher being the person showing up on a marvelous work right yeah like how do you have a problem with an actor hired to be a host having a stage name but you don't have a problem with your co-host guy bill real having an actual channel where he never discloses that he is anti-mormon right like how how do you square those things how how is the stage name dishonest but what rfm is doing here isn't you bring up a really good point we literally just did an entire podcast on how bill real is calling <laughs> stage name using actor getting paid to act dishonest meanwhile we're 2 minutes in to mormon sunday school by one of the biggest anti mormons on the platform of youtube and he still has not self-identified as an anti-Mormon. Like this is this is pernicious stuff. It's creepy. It's uh, it's unethical. Um, I I I I I have lost. I I disrespect this completely. So we're gonna move on because this is just dark, and um, I don't see. I, I've I've really lost a lot of respect for the ex Mormon community by allowing this kind of thing to happen. Like when they just kind of allowed. Uh, um, there was a little bit of pushback on who is that Norton guy that wanted to film with a porn star in the temple. Don't forget. Um. Uh, Bill Real and RFM are the guys that said, oh, remember, oh, you, you talk as though there's something wrong with it when Mike Norton wanted to hire a porn star to have a sex scene in the Salt oh, yeah, Lake Temple. Yeah, 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 you guys yeah. remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So these are the same guys and they're welcomed and lauded as heroes in the ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon community. And frankly, this is just sick. It's disturbed and it is perverse. So um, I don't know. You guys have any thoughts before I close? I want to get out of this podcast and go and talk about something fun, you know? But <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, exactly. I got nothing to add. Yeah, because this I, is. I wonder, I wonder at what point he is going to be clear, you know? Like, I'm, I'm just watching through more of this. There's not a single thumbnail he, that I saw where he self identifies as somebody who is what he is. Here's literally. Introduction of the Book of Mormon. All right. Gospel principles, the Holy Ghost, chapter seven. Look, let me let me just put this up on on the screen so uh everybody can see this. I'm just literally just reading what's on the screen. Then gospel principles, the creation. And he literally has the covers of the book. Gospel principles 
on the thumbnail. Let's keep going down. Gospel principles, the creation, chapter five, gospel principles, the fall, chapter six. Why is the Book of Mormon so boring? Okay, that's that doesn't self-represent as uh, anti-Mormon. That's actually just kind of funny, you know, but literally not a single one of these videos says criticism of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or criticism of the Book of Mormon, which is inherently what his whole entire ethos is. So, um, yeah, this is just creepy. It's weird. It's unethical. I, I, I don't see a, a community that fosters this is just gross. So, yeah, dude, um, he, he just, I, I'm still watching through, watching some of the captions and yeah, watching for it. He talks about how when he was a kid and when he was baptized and that sort of stuff, still haven't seen a th single thing yeah. where he's up front. This is the epitome of just fulfillment of scriptural of wolves in sheep's clothing. And it's, it's just weird. I thought when I met one of these people once, there would be kind of like some kind of cool edge to him. And no, it's just really creepy and gross. And I don't want him around my children. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We're going to go have some fun now, um, and not be super creepy and weird. Okay. Um, let us know if you think we go wrong, where we go wrong, and all of our ex-Mormon, anti-Mormon hate watchers that love to talk ethics and and um, abuse and so on and so forth, please describe to me how this is not unethical. And um, we're all ears here because, frankly, I don't see it. As always, ladies and gentlemen, for this and more, please check us out at wardradio.com. I ain't trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crap.